Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to do a uh, Why Did This Reel Fail? This reel came in from uh, George in uh, Long Island. It's totally locked up. There's uh, some play in that switch, but this reel can't turn. What is this reel? This reel is the um, Quantum. It's the Accurist 100 HTP. It's a nice reel, generally speaking. It's a high speed reel. It's 7.0 to 1. But, uh, well, that high speed isn't doing it any good right now. It is completely and utterly frozen. We don't know why George sent it in because, well, it doesn't work. And, uh, well, we're going to see what we can do to, to give this reel a second chance. I'm going to start by trying to take this handle off. And, well, this screw is, now it's being a little bit uncooperative. We'll put a little bit of penetrating oil on there. And uh, while I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing reel service and repair. If you like to learn about fishing reels, and sometimes the best learning is by figuring out why they failed. If you'd like to uh, learn how to keep your reel serviced and make sure that it doesn't fail you when you're out there on a trip, well, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please use that notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting, what I'm posting, and uh, well, we'll see if that's a, a video that interests you. In this case, we've got one that's locked up, and I guess it locked up so badly, the rest of the line couldn't even be brought in. And, uh, well, I don't know. It's hard to can have any conjecture in terms of what the issue is, but taking it apart and doing a video, video, visual inspection of it uh, certainly can do that. We're going to take the exterior pieces off. While we do this, I encourage you, if you're doing something like this, to take a lot of pictures and also go ahead and try and find the schematic for the reel. Now, that schematic is out there, but I've worked on these accuracies before. So I want to say I'm going to trust my memory on this, but I always know there is a backup plan should I need one. And that backup plan would be to get the schematic that's going to detail that out in the burst diagram. Inside your uh, noisemaker here, you have a uh, couple of tension washers and a flat washer. The flat washer is going to be what faces the, the uh, star adjuster as the last one on top of the stack. We have a ball bearing here, so I guess pretty much we can stop at that ball bearing. I think I'm going to need the micro drivers for this. So I'll just uh, take a moment here and get that screwdriver set out. And we're going to have to take this, uh, this outer case off because that's where the main gear is. And right now we don't know what's going on inside. So generally when you see something like this where it's seized and your, your line is still hanging out and you couldn't complete the retrieve, that generally is an indication that something snapped in the reel itself. So we're gonna, I guess we'll find out soon enough. That may be big enough to use a, a normal screwdriver on. When I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. I have a multi-section uh, fast food container that I use as a parts tray. And when I when I do that, I like to, um, to put the sub-assembly pieces in different corners of the tray. That's why I that way I can make sure I know where they are when it's time to install. I'll show you that in a moment. I'm just wrestling with that one little piece. But you can see how the pieces have come off and uh, where, where they're being temporarily housed. All right, those are two of the screws. I thought I saw a third one in here. I guess not. Let's see if that's going to make this able to be removed. Now, we got to get to the underneath the spool. And right now, I think that's going to be a problem because this should be the spool release trigger here. Allowing me to open up the side. And right now I think that's pretty much problematic. With a little bit of effort I was able to use some penetrating oil and push that up. That releases the side plate. The side plate can come off. This is a good place to test what's going on because, well, next out should be the spool. But the spool isn't cooperating and coming out. Well, let's try and Take this piece off. And I'm not sure why, but it just doesn't want to play nice today. There we go. Alright. So, 
cut this line. This line might be the problem. You never know. Cut the line. We have a, a spool now. I'm going to just use a rubber band here to put that line back. At this point, with what's left on this reel, you probably just want to return, put some new line on it to begin with when uh, it's functioning. But no sense jump, jumping to that. You can't put any line on it right now. The reel's not turning. Well, this is the next part where you do the diagnosis. Spools out. Oh, that bearing is seized. That's the issue right there. That's the bearing is no good. It's not turning. So if that's the issue, then this side of the reel should turn now. Look at that. Turns free and easy. So somehow, some way, uh, this spool bearing seized. Well, that's not that hard to, to figure out because, well, it's a stainless steel bearing and if the wrong kind of uh, dirt and grease and debris and the like gets in there, it's not shielded. Or it is shielded, it's not sealed. And the stainless steel, steel bearings will rust and, uh, well, eventually they will cause that to, uh, to fail. I'm going to do that schematic now. I want to see if we can pull this pin out and replace that bearing. I'll be back. Okay, it says it's replaceable. First thing I want to do is pull up and out. I'm going to use a screwdriver, uh, a channel lock plier to push that one edge up. And I'll use my micro pliers to bring it out the rest of the way. There are uh, little burring tools that will help you push these out. Because this is the caveman variety of doing that. Pin is out. And I think this is going to be a little bit of an issue now because it's still frozen. That pin is just a retaining pin. So I think it would be best at the moment just to soak this thing with some penetrating oil. Put it off to the side. Open up the side case here. Make sure that there's nothing broken in the side case. And then come back and complete the service. They were crafty here. They were hiding this screw. I, I knew that there had to be a screw up here. I couldn't find it. That's because it's black on black here. And I guess my eyes aren't what they used to be. All right. So I'll take that screw out. A lot of times if you don't find the, what you're looking for here, the schematic will help. But sometimes when you only see the two screws on the side plate, assume that well, there's others that are being hidden in there somewhere. Right. It looks like this inside of the reel is going to be pretty full of dirt and grease. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that does it now. Now this one, if I remember, this flipper switch always shoots out. No, we got this one off pretty good. Yeah, so we have dried grease and dirt and debris and the like inside this. So that's next up. The case itself is fairly clean. We'll take care of that. Oh. Cotton swab. I want to test that burning back here too. That one's okay. I'll oil that burning. Let that seep in. Case is good. Back case, we can oil that bearing too. So it looks like we only had a problem with the one of them. Okay, let's uh, let's do the service on this side where we have it. Lots of dried grease and dirt. First thing I'm going to take off are those two yoke spins because they generally fly off if you don't take them off. Next thing I'm going to do is put a glove on. Because there's dirt and debris and grease and junk in there, and I don't want that on my hands, or at least my one hand. Wish I could do more with uh, two gloves, but I can't, so I'll recognize at least I can do one. Pull your first piece off is a very thin washer. Again, take the pictures. Put that in your parts tray so you don't lose it. Next up is the anti-reverse collar. And we can pull our main gear. 
under our main gear there's a washer and a click ring. That click ring is what's going to be tripped by the trip mechanism here. There's our pinion gear and yoke. And the rest of this you don't need to touch. I know there's a lot of people out there that say, okay, let me uh, let me go deep on this. I think maybe one of the ones we'll do, we'll take this. I'm not sure if there's a bearing or a bushing under here, so I will go ahead and take this one apart. Worked on enough of them. I should know the answer to that. I don't. This is the uh, this is holding the gear gear shaft in place, and it also has a little bushing or a bearing. It has a bearing. Test the bearing. Use my finger to test it there. That's fine. Oil that. I oil bearings. I don't grease them. And uh, well, let's put it right back on so that we don't uh, don't lose. And by lose, I mean lose my chain of thought, lose the pieces and parts, lose all kinds of things. To me, if you work in sub-assemblies, you do yourself a favor rather than taking the whole wheel apart and then trying to remember which came first and second and so on. And uh, if you get stuck and you haven't taken the pictures and you don't have the schematic, well, those are become what I call wheel in a bag projects. I have one that I'll be doing soon on a, uh, a pen senator that came in. And uh, well, it worked in small bites. It's a lot easier to get it done. All right, just gonna flood that with the penetrating oil to do the cleaning. As I mentioned, there is some debris on here. I'm gonna use cotton swabs to uh, deal with most of this. Looks like there's some coagulated grease on here. Let's get rid of that. Same thing up here. This is your flipper switch. This is your yoke. Let's remove the yoke and clean that. Hopefully that bearing is to the point where it's loosening up. We may have to use heat to get that off. That's unusual because that shouldn't have seized during a retrieve. Very unusual. I mean, that, we're talking rust here. We're not talking uh, something traumatic. We're talking about something that is very slow to develop. Unless something fractured inside the bearing. And that, to me, I don't think I've seen that before. Look for your slants or your ramps on the yoke that faces the spool. Look for the slots that faces the spool. Get your fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using pen precision reel grease. Kind of lather that up. Find the slots. They go to the front of the reel. And put that back on the assembly. Again, we, to the extent that we can work small sections at a time, the better off we are. Let's take a look at that main gear. We have a main gear. We have a drag washer here that's also showing signs that it hasn't been uh, serviced in a while because it's stuck to the base. I'm using a razor knife here to gently lift it up and unstick it. It's a hard washer. And what you want to do here is you want to make sure this is clean and well I'm beginning to wonder if this reel didn't get dunked. It's, it's like what What's causing the washers to stick? What's causing the, the bearing to freeze? That kind of stuff. I'm looking at the back of this, which really shouldn't look that severe. Take a flat file and just scrape over that. Most of that is old grease. Again, now making it as clean as you can. So a lot of what you're doing in real repair and service is checking the pieces and parts like we just did there with the drag washer, found out that that was stuck. The drag washer's got enough meat on it, it's not that it has to be replaced, but it's not going to spin and give you the drag if it's stuck to the base of the reel. Check that out, make sure that you don't find any pits 
in that. And I'm going to put a very light coating of grease. This is a hard washer. doesn't need it, but just the lightest coating just to prevent it from corroding again, if you will. And we can put that back in there. We can take our click ratchet now, put that back on. Make sure that the points in the click ratchet are facing here. That's what's going to intersect with it. There's two ways you can put that on. There's a right way and a wrong way. This is the right way. When this comes down to trip, let's see if we can bring it down now. We shouldn't be able to blow anything up. You'll see that it's going to intersect with that. And when you turn, it's going to kick it back up. Of course, in this case, not yet because we're not fully set. All right. I want to make sure we oil that uh, click mechanism there as well. All right. The main gear. Check the teeth on that. We've got a bunch of old grease in here. So again, I'm not sure what the story is behind this wheel in terms of what's happened to it. But I'm going to use a hard brush to pull through those teeth. Get that old dirt and grease out that you can see coming to the paper towel here. That's all jamming the teeth and would make the performance of this reel compromised. If you like, you can grab a, a small uh, screwdriver or other types of wedge, pull it through, but right now I think we've got it all out with the other piece. Wipe the back down one more time. Now we'll put some fishing wheel grease on this. And, uh, well, starting to get concerned now, thinking about that bearing. There's two things that are going through my mind at the moment. The first one is that the um, bearing is going to need to be replaced. There's no question about that. The first question is, do I have that bearing? And the second one is, can I get the one that we just have soaking in the penetrating oil off easily? And the operative word there is easily. Okay, that's off. The collar goes next. Our two small screw, uh, springs for the yoke go on. And we can close this up. Just checking pieces of parts. Close it up. Just align your, your case mounts. There's still a little bit of dirt in here. I'm going to take a moment to get that out of there. When you put this on, you're going to need to make sure that you're here as well. And have that flipper switch mount in. That's okay on the bearing there. And make sure that you're nice and tight with the seam as you put that all the way through. Go to my parts tray now. We have the two of these. The two different sizes. We'll put that on. that one down. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, you want to leave those questions in the comment section. I do try to answer those for you. Generally speaking, I will try and answer those in the morning before I go into my shop. So I would encourage you to leave them at that point. So if it's a uh, after my shop is, is over for the evening and you've left a message, don't expect something back at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's not going to happen. Uh, but expect that uh, we will get back to you the next morning. All right, this is not the way to screw for that. I 
think what we found is we just put the wrong screw there. So this is why it's worth noting. I remember that it went to the bottom, but when I did this, bottom wasn't bottom, if you will. Bottom was top. Okay. Bring that back out. goes here. Put one in the back here. That's always hard for me to get done. done. Get the little one now that goes up top. Go to your micro driver if you need it. There's a bearing shield on both sides of this. Don't recall if I oiled that, so let's go ahead and oil that one. I think I oiled it from the inside, but it doesn't hurt. Turn it, make sure that it's turning. This one's working fine and free. I'm going to bring that out now. We'll do a service of the line guide pole while we are at it. Pull the cap. And we need to work the, the other one out. Most of the time it can be done by tapping. that goes to the center of that. We're almost there. There we go. You can start to see that it's coming out now. And I think this one has a ridge on it, so if I use my utility knife, I can get that out the rest of the way. There, very good. You want to pull that out because you want to inspect the shoulders. This one has some dirt on it. You want to clean the shoulders of this. Remove any greases, dirts, and grime. And also check to make sure that the points on the pole are in good condition. Then a shot of oil into the cavity. And then go ahead and replace this in the cylinder. Now make sure it goes all the way down by holding pressure on that pole and turning. Push it in the rest of the way so that we can get that small washer in. Put the washer in, put the cap back on. Now this is a plastic cap. Be very careful as you go to tighten this up. Make sure that it is not cross stripped and do not tighten or, or do not over tighten. Snug it up, turn, turn it, make sure that it turns nice and easily. A little bit of oil onto your worm gear. 
And uh, well, we've done everything we can on the case. Now it's time to see what we can do about that bearing. I'm going to take a short break. We'll come back and uh, see if we can make this project a success. Okay, time to see. I'm going to use some screwdrivers to pry up and out. Oh, there we go. Broke free. Okay, this is the culprit. Yeah, this is frozen solid. Next step then, I probably should have thought about that before I did this, was match out the bearing. Hopefully I have one and don't have to order it. Okay, my, my luck has run out. I do not have this bearing. So, how do you order a bearing as a replacement? Sometimes you can go in and say, I need a quantum accurist uh, bearing, and somebody will have it. Best to check. So one of the things you would like to do is uh, get a caliper, a digital caliper here. Measure the inside. That's five. Measure the outside. That's 11. Measure the height. That's four. So it's five by 11 by four. Inside diameter, outside diameter, height. 5, 11, 4. I'll have to try and remember that. All right, I'm going to go online. I'm going to go order that uh, bearing. And, uh, well, we'll complete the uh, reel at that point. But I think it's interesting. The, uh, the video, uh, we're going to call this video complete uh, in that we've determined what the cause is. It's been a frozen bearing. We don't know why it froze, but we do know it froze. And it has to be replaced before we can continue uh, with the rebuild of this reel. We showed you how to take this reel apart completely, how to service the gear side. We didn't put the rest of the handle stuff on. I'll do that as the video uh, when I finish the video because I do not need to go there anymore. And uh, well, we'll just uh, uh, tighten up what we can. We'll leave the spool out at this point and uh, we'll get that bearing and complete the service. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think sometimes you can learn more about fishing wheels and why they fail than, than just doing a general service of them. And boy, this one is frozen tight. Okay, uh, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders, our police, fire, safety, and rescue folks. And uh, they're, I want to applaud them for their career choice and their dedication to service. And I uh, appreciate everything it is that they do. All right, we're going to go down with that. We'll bring this up, put the handle on, put that little cap on for the, the spool, and uh, get off to the computer to go do some ordering. I, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this. Hopefully you've learned as much as I have about this reel. And uh, if you have one, you now know how to service it and uh, keep it running and hopefully uh, trouble-free, not like this one where we've had a frozen bearing. Okay. Best wishes to all. Thanks for watching.